Hey guys, uh, so what I want to talk to you about today is firearms reviews and why I find them to be so frustrating. Today here on the range, I'm shooting my Walmart exclusive uh, Savage Mark II. Uh, this is in a Boyd's At One stock from Walmart and I did put a primary arms SLX 4 to 14, 4 to 16 power scope on it and a primary arms uh, uh, scope rail, uh, scope rings, and I'm going to talk about those in a separate video. Today what I want to talk about is kind of, is kind of the industry itself, and uh, although I'm going to be talking about 22 long rifle and match type stuff, it's kind of an overarching issue with the industry. So behind me, I shot five groups, uh, five five-shot groups of all of these different ammos here. CCI, Standard Velocity, Ely Can Contact, Ely Force, Ely something or other, Bench Outlaw, Semi-Auto Bench Outlaw, Ely Team, Ely Club, Ely Target, Ely Match, Ely 10X. And what I wanted to see is if there was an ammo that my gun liked, because whether or not these 22s can be picky on what guns, uh, on what ammo they like. Well, I wanted to find out for my own good what ammo my gun liked and what was, what ammos made sense to buy financially. For instance, if my gun really, really liked Ely Club at seven or eight dollars a box, as well as Ely 10X at twenty dollars a box, I wouldn't buy any Ely 10X. But what this is leading me to, I am doing this reviewing for myself, and I'm going to share that information for you later. But the reason I want to talk to you about it is uh, new for this year, Hammarelli released a rifle called the Force B1 and it's a straight pull 22 long rifle with quick change barrel capability. And so I looked at a bunch of reviews on it on like uh, Recoil Magazine of course. Um, uh, a few others, I don't remember all of the magazines or the marketing agencies but every single one of them was talking about how the accuracy was great out of the box or the accuracy was good. Or they mentioned we shot it at 50 meters and it was good. And we even stretched it out to uh, 100 meters and accuracy was still good. We're talking about a bull barrel rifle with a target style stock and people who are being paid to do reviews, not people necessarily, but companies, who are being paid to do reviews, who are saying the accuracy is good. They can't even put forth the effort of giving us more information. So what's frustrating to me about this is that's a $500 gun. Springfield Armory, uh, those commies just released their 2022 uh beautiful line of 22 long rifle uh, rifles in this direct uh, genre. Uh, and they're all kind of uh, starting to be based on what would be practical for NRL 22. But the but Springfield Armory only advertises a guarantee of two MOA at 50 meters with good ammo. And that's a trash warranty. That's basically, uh, I, I can outshoot that with an off the shelf $120 uh, cricket with good ammo. Uh, so it's basically a nothing warranty. They're, they're giving a accuracy guarantee that is worthless, but they feel like you know the average consumer will see that there's an accuracy guarantee and they will assume that it's an accurate product. And so I want to talk to you about this Walmart exclusive here, Savage Mark II. Uh, I would say that I am a fan of the Savage Mark II platform. Uh, this rifle was $450 from Walmart with a 3 to 9 scope. I removed the scope. I'll talk about it in my review briefly, but it's just a cheap 3 to 9 scope. Not a whole lot to say there. Uh, but it's $100 with the rings uh, retail. I think that's about what you're going to pay for a, a normal 3 to 9 scope. So this is a basically, I'm going to call this a $350 rifle. And so 
what I want to show you here is uh, I can't switch things around, I guess, so I'm going to have to be a little bit uh, uh, creative with my uh, recording. But uh, we've got my micrometer here, and uh, with CCI standard velocity ammo, uh, cheap ammo uh, can regularly be found for $5 a box. We are looking at uh, my group uh, right over an inch or at an inch at most of these groups if I didn't throw flyers, okay? And it gets better going down to Ely Target. We go down to... Uh, about uh, a seventh, uh, seven-tenths of an inch, which that's not, that's not good. That's below two MOA, okay? But we are right, we're basically, if I did my part, I'm shooting off of a bipod and a uh, too small of a bag here at 50 meters. We're talking about two MOA with CCI standard velocity, which is generally considered, I believe, to be kind of the best quality non-match ammo. But then we get down here, and if I did my part and didn't have this flyer, down here to the Ely 10X, and we are at just over half of an inch even with my flyer. So if you do half of an inch and you minus 0.21 for the diameter of the bullet, we are looking at about half an MOA at 50 meters. Uh, and then if you do it without the flyer, it's at 0.31, those four rounds in one ragged hole, you minus 0.21, we're at a tenth of an inch. We're talking about, it's not even worth measuring, we're talking about far, far below one MOA in my $350 rifle. But part of the reason that I mention this is in the hammer, the only Hammerelli um, Force B1 review that I saw that actually gave uh, some accuracy here with CCI standard velocity there at about an inch and a half uh, with uh, a few others there at about an inch and a half with Remington Ely target ammo. They were at 1.1 inches. So the rifle shot objectively worse. Uh, and it's a $500 rifle, not a super expensive rifle, 550 Objectively a bit worse with the match grade ammo than mine does with standard velocity. However, uh, each gun likes different ammo, but he didn't you didn't have any information on the more expensive and better ammos. I have absolutely no doubt that this the Savage Mark II platform can shoot far better than one MOA out of the box. And if I put this thing into a sled to really test the accuracy potential of the rifle, I believe that um, with this 10X, I would be shooting basically one whole groups at 50 meters. Uh, with my CCI standard velocity out to 100 yards on my two inch ringer, I can hit it every single time. Even without my, with my paint being old, kind of hard to see, a little bit of grass in front, it, in front of the target, I can hit every single time at 100 yards. I am going to test this rifle, or I do intend to test this rifle out to 200 and maybe even 300 yards if I have, excuse me, enough elevation adjustment and MOA um, um, advantage through my rings here. These are 20, this is a 20 MOA ring set on here. It might get me to 300, maybe not. But there's, there's two things here. For one, your grandpappy's squirrel rifle, if you put a good scope on it, and maybe uh, bed the, the action or something like that, make sure it's free-floated. Your grandpappy's squirrel rifle is potentially better than the target rifles coming out today, possibly and potentially, very objective terms. And uh, a lot of the target stuff that's coming out today is very unimpressive as we have companies like Springfield Army or Hammerelli outsourcing to uh, Turkey Generally, I don't think Turkey is... They, they put out good guns, don't get me wrong. They can put out good guns, but generally speaking, when it comes to accuracy, I don't think that they're putting out 
uh, the best guns purely for, for accuracy. Um, but they're, they're outsourcing this stuff and it does not, I do not think it's holding up. Whereas the Tika just came out with the, what is it, the T1X from Finland. First year it came out, it won NRL 22 at the championship level. It's absolutely fantastic. These Savages are made in Canada. They sell for amazing prices and these things will shoot, guys. And then you have obviously CZ kind of, in, from what I can tell, kind of dominating the markets. But there, there are ups and downs to all of these things. But I, I, it's frustrating seeing what's coming new to the market. It's frustrating seeing uh, that these companies are still paying massive amounts of money to send rifles off to reviews from these dying media agencies and magazines and stuff like that. And objective reviews are still on YouTube being buried. And this is why, like, the freelance journalism is so important. Actually having reviewers out there doing their own stuff is so valuable to companies. And most of these companies, they just can't even appreciate it yet. So, guys, if you want to support this channel, there's ways to do it in the description box below. I own an American-made knife brand with a no-questions-asked lifetime uh, guarantee on standard options. I own Beach and Tactical. I hand-make rifle slings that I designed in Afghanistan. I've got a Patreon. I've got this stuff. I do whatever videos I want to do. I have never been paid to do a video, and I'll never be paid just to do a video. And... Um, it's getting harder and harder to find and the magazine industry is really hurting and it's really kind of sad to see some of the stuff that's going on. That doesn't mean every magazine article is bad. That doesn't mean every magazine writer is bad. But I think magazine companies still have a stranglehold on, uh, on the marketing industry and on these companies on getting paid for reviews and they can't even afford to put out quality content as a whole anymore or as a rule uh, because they're not selling magazines. I don't know, especially Recoil. I freaking hate Recoil. It's just horrible. So, I don't know. This is just a kind of a rant video on um, gun reviews, on where you get your information from, on the current status of the industry on on 22 specific match grade rifles on all of these things it's kind of weird it's kind of crazy i would like to start doing more reviews on more of these 22s i'll have uh like i said i'll have a review coming up on this i'll have a final review coming up on the cricket cpr cricket precision rifle and i think that we'll be shooting some very similar groups to this right out of the box especially it with the proper optic um i'll have reviews coming up on the savage rascal and savage rascal target rifles and i've got some other stuff some heritage some revolver reviews coming up but uh, and a lot of knife content of course coming up as well but it's a crazy world out there guys and part of my personal internal motivation for doing this from the beginning and what's kept me motivated is seeing these crappy reviews. Seeing these YouTube channels that have exploded uh, in any industry but give almost no objective information. L listen, for the most part right now, whoever your favorite YouTubers are, whatever your favorite magazine is, when you log in and you go to your favorite source for information, what you are getting is a commercial. You're literally paying for and personally invested in your favorite commercial manufacturer. Be it Grand Thumb or any of these other guys, it's a freaking commercial and they're making a living. They're not necessarily bad for doing it. Not necessarily, but uh, it's crazy that the, the once wild west of YouTube has now become a place 
where people go and where people pay to get commercials. It's genius, it's amazing, it's sad, it's crazy, and it's just where we are at in this world. And uh, I can't tell you how many channels I have seen like myself who see what little effort goes into a lot of reviews and a lot of these channels and a lot of these sources that are such low effort and how popular they get. And they start their channel uh, thinking that if they put in the effort and do really good reviews that they'll explode, they get no growth and they quit. Guys, and people say to me all the time, you're doing this, that, or the other wrong. Look at how little growth you have. If I was here for the growth, I wouldn't be here anymore. I'm here because I'm motivated to, to do videos and talk about the things that I think are important. And uh, if you are looking to start a channel because you want free stuff to make money, to get respect, and to grow a channel, do something else. Seriously. The only reason to do YouTube if you want to do honest reviews is because you can't not do YouTube. At the end of the day, that's the deal. So uh, that's what I've got for today. I've got a bunch of other stuff that I wanted to do. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to get some of this stuff rolled out. Uh, I'm exceptionally happy with uh, this Savage Mark II in particular. Um, also, pretty soon, I think I will have a side-by-side -side comparison between the Savage, a CZ457 in basically the same stock, and I think a Bergara. And I will have a lot of uh, 22 revolver comparison videos coming up as well. Um, I like 22s. I've got a lot of content to make on primary arms. I've been using primary arms uh, for a while now to include their Cyclops, which I ran through classes at Tactical Response. I like, I like the company. I like what they're doing. They pay attention to the market. They listen to people and you see that in their products as their products advance and grow. And uh, that's why I'm an affiliate for them. So uh, I'm gonna wrap this up with saying I'm an affiliate for like Optics Planet, PSA, um, Primary Arms. Maybe I am or was an affiliate for Brownells and I took that down myself. Maybe I, I'm not exactly sure about Optics Planet anymore either. But at first the reason was these were the places that I was going to get good deals on buying mags and ammo and whatever it is that I needed. And so I'm an affiliate for these companies because no matter what you're buying, you're probably going to go to them anyways. So I can put a link in there and whatever you're getting, I can get a little kickback on that, right? All of, all of the companies that I'm an aff affiliate for, for the most part, send me emails daily or multiple times a day l with lists of what they want me to sell. And I never share it. I only sh if I'm going to share a link with you to a product that you can buy from these people it's because I've reviewed it and I'm sure that it's good. Like Mr. Guns and Gear has uh, on his like Telegram, he'll po post all of these links every day, 10, 20, 30 posts on the daily deals or on what the companies want to sell or whatever. He's not reviewing all of these products, he's trying to make a buck. I don't blame necessarily him. And I don't necessarily blame the company for doing it. The company's got to do what they've got to do to make sales to keep the, the store open, right? But for me, it's just I'm not a commercial. I'm not going to become a commercial. And uh, and I believe, I, I, I remember a YouTube that was the Wild West. And that's what I want to keep going. So if you see an affiliate link down there, that's why... Uh, Kentucky, uh, Kentuckiana Gunworks, their oil, I use it myself. He's local, he's a cool dude. It's the only oil I use. So yeah, there's an affiliate link on there and you can use coupon code TPBO and get a discount coupon on that. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a weird place and it's a weird market. And it's, it's weird, it's especially weird when it comes to guns and knives, guys. So, I don't know, was this a rant video? 
was this a, I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is that was a lot of shooting and it took way longer than I expected and I'm excited to get the full video up and I've still got a backlog of like 20 other full videos to get up and I hate editing. So I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. Have a blessed day. I'll talk to you in the comments section below.